There are two types of reflection, specular and diffuse. In specular reflection, incident rays that are parallel remain parallel when reflected. In diffuse reflection, incident rays that are parallel do not remain parallel when they're reflected. Mirrors, for example, exhibit specular reflection. Now, how to tell if reflection is going to be specular or diffuse? Well, it depends on the size of light's wavelengths compared to the surface irregularities of the object. You'll get specular reflection if, compared to the surface irregularities, light's wavelengths are large. And you'll get diffuse reflection if, compared to the surface irregularities, light's wavelengths are small. For example, this mirror in the upper left exhibits specular reflection. The surface irregularities on the glass of that mirror are very small compared to the wavelengths of light. And the wavelengths of light don't even see those small imperfections. And they reflect parallel to each other. Visible light with a mirror is an example of specular reflection. Visible light with clothing is an example of diffuse reflection. Light hits clothing and the imperfections in the surface are quite large relative to the wavelengths of light. So you can almost think of the wavelengths of light as being able to get into those irregularities and then when they reflect out they reflect out in just some random direction. Radio waves have very long wavelengths. Radio waves see virtually no imperfections. In other words, radio waves reflect in a specular fashion from almost anything. It's kind of like monster trucks with huge tires there are no such things as potholes for monster trucks. Those imperfections in the road are far too small to be noticed by the very large tires of monster trucks. On the other hand, skateboards notice rather small imperfections in sidewalks and roadways. If the wavelengths of light are small, relative to the imperfections of the surface, you're going to get diffuse reflection. If the surface irregularities are very, very tiny and the wavelengths are much, much bigger, then you're going to get specular reflection. Can the wavelengths of light get into the nooks and crannies? If the answer to that is yep, then you have diffuse reflection. If the answer is nope, then you have specular reflection. So. Is this radio telescope a specular or diffuse reflector? And the answer is, of course, yes. The telescope acts like a diffuse reflector to visible light waves because those wavelengths are small compared to the dimensions of the parts of the telescope. However, the telescope acts as a specular reflector to radio waves, which have much larger wavelengths on the order of tens or hundreds of meters. So, if we go back to the question at the top, can the wavelengths of light get into the nooks and crannies? For this radio telescope, the answer is yes for visible wavelengths. But the answer is nope for the very long wavelengths of radio waves. And, as you can see, many, many things which we take to be smooth are not. Specular reflection occurs when the wavelengths of the incident light are large relative to the surface irregularities of the material. The light reflects in a smooth, predictable manner. When the incident wavelengths are small compared to the surface irregularities, we have diffuse reflection. The light is scattered in random directions.